All right, so shall we move on to, uh, let's move on to a little bit of our next segment. It'll be a little bit of fun about the history of the Super Bowl. Um, I'd like to introduce our very own two associates, uh, Maureen Murphy and Dick Eason. Hello, everyone. <laughs> ah, I love what you're wearing. Clearly hey. in the wrong team uh, gear. I was hoping my Steelers were going to make it to the Super Bowl this year. They started off with an 11 and 0 uh, record, but then things didn't go very well. So anyway, I'm not still, giving up on them, right? I'm not giving up on them. Um, so I'm going to uh, talk about the history of the Super Bowl and share some slides so you don't have to uh, look at me the whole time and just kind of make this fun. And then I'm going to turn it over to Dick and he's gonna talk to us about some uh, stamps. So let me get started here. I'm gonna share my screen and get my, I always struggle with this. So give me a minute. Okay, let me get this in pre There we go, yep. Can you see the, is this, there. Is that good? We're good? Yes. Okay, we're ready. Here we go. So the history of the Super Bowl. As we all know, the Super Bowl is an enormously popular sporting event that takes place each year to determine the championship team of the National Football League, the NFL. Some people call it win the winter's 4th of July. Others say it's America's biggest party. It happens every year on a Sunday in February or January. Millions of fans gather around their televisions to celebrate this de facto national holiday. Some of us call it Super Sunday. Broadcast in more than 170 countries, the Super Bowl is one of the most watched sporting events in the world with elaborate halftime shows, celebrity appearances, cutting edge commercials, all adding to the appeal. Um, after more than 50 years of ex um, existence, it's safe to assume that the Super Bowl has become a legendary symbol of American culture. While we might consider it just a game, the Super Bowl has become a unique shared experience in American culture. It's likely the only time of year that viewers are glued to the television screens watching the same broadcast, even if they don't care about the teams or the outcome of the game. Ahead of this Sunday Super Bowl 55 game where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will take on the defending champions, the Kansas City Chiefs, here's everything you know, need to know about football's biggest day. Though the NFL officially formed in 1920, the Super Bowl didn't happen until 40 years later. In 1960, a group of businessmen who wanted to own football franchises but were denied by the NFL decided to launch an alternative league known as the American Football League, the AFL. For several years, the NFL and the AFL were rivals. They competed for fans, players, and support. And then in 1966, the owners negotiated an agreement to merge the leagues by 1970. So the first Super Bowl, which featured the AFL and the NFL champions took place in 1966. And it was originally called the AFL NFL World Championship Game, which wasn't exactly catchy. <laughs> so the AFL Kansas City chief owner, Lamar Hunt, proposed using the term Super Bowl to refer to the championship game. And after the leagues merged, the NFL split into two conferences, the American Football Conference, AFC, and the National Football Conference, NFC. The champions now play the Super Bowl. So the very first, so I'm going to talk about the first four Super Bowls. So Super Bowl I took place on January 15, 1967, and it included the NFL's Green Bay Packers against the AFL's Kansas City Chiefs. The game was held at the Los Angeles Coliseum, and even though the ticket prices averaged just $12, think about how crazy that is, it was the only Super Bowl that didn't sell out. <laughs> Still, the game aired on two different networks and drew in an audience of more than 61,000 fans. Uh, the, the Packers outperformed the Chiefs, winning 35 to 10. The next year, the, the Packers decisively won Super Bowl II, defeating the Oakland Raiders, 33 to 14. And many questions began whether the AFL teams could hold their own in the NFL. But the next year, but but next year, the AFL's New York Jets, led by the quarterback Joe Namath, defeated the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl III. Let's 
Super Bowl four was the last game played between the two leagues and the AFL's Kansas City Chiefs beat the Minnesota Vikings 23 to seven. The popularity of the event continued to grow after the leagues integrated. So from the 70s to present, during the 70s, uh, three NFL teams, the Pittsburgh Steelers, my team, whoop, whoop, the <laughs> Miami Dolphins and the uh, Dallas Cowboys dominated the NFL scene and won a combined eight Super Bowls in 10 years. Franchise, fr franchises from the NFC won 16 of the 20 Super Bowls in the 80s and 90s. Teams like the 49ers, the Chicago Bears, the Redskins, and the New York Giants stood out during these years. The, Cow the Dallas Cowboys resurged in the 90s and the Buffalo Bills became a powerhouse franchise, although they never won a Super Bowl, infamously losing four title games in a row from 91 to 94. The AFC bounced back in the year in the year since the Bills run of losses between 1995 and 2016 five teams the Broncos the Patriots the Steelers the Ravens and the uh, Indianapolis Colts were represented in 20 of the 22 AFC Super Bowl appearances and since 2001 the Patriots have established themselves as a dynasty with Tom Brady leading them to nine Super Bowl appearances and five wins. And as we all know, this Sunday, Tom Brady's going to the Super Bowl again as the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Gonna check the pressure. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to talk a little bit about the halftime shows, which, you know, are big to do. So early in the early days, the Super Bowl featured mostly marching bands from local high schools or colleges during the halftime shows. And obviously, as the years went on, popular musicians began to take the stage and the shows evolved into a much anticipated spectacle. Some viewers consider the halftime show now a th full 30 minute act, a bigger event than actual football game, tuning in solely for the musical entertainment. Internationally famed artists such as Michael Jackson, U2, Madonna, Bruce Springsteen, Lady Gaga, Paul McCartney, Prince, Beyonce, Coldplay, to name some, um, this year, we're, it's the weekend. Um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with him. He's a Canadian uh, singer who does a lot of pop. He's 30 years old. Um, he should put on a great show. And then I am going to end this. Here's our guys, the rivalry, um, with some fun facts about the Super Bowl. And I'm only, I think I'm just going to read about three. So let's see. The Super Bowl venue changes each year and no team has ever played in its home stadium. This year will be the first time that that's happened because the, the Buccaneers will be playing at their home stadium. Super Bowl Sunday is the second largest day for food consumption in the United States with only Thanksgiving ahead of it. So everybody's going to be snacking and eating and just having a great time. And then this is probably one of my favorites. Nearly 14 million Americans are expected to call in sick to work the day after the big game, which is sometimes dubbed Super Sick Monday. Right. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna stop sharing and I am gonna hand this over to Dick and he's gonna take us through some stamps. So I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Thank you, Maureen.